tackle this later on. Um, so that being said, um, a quick tutorial for those of you who are watching this on Zoom. On the bottom of your screen, moving from left to right, there are some features that are there. On the far left, you should see a microphone, and right now it should have a red line through it, and that means you're muted. To unmute your microphone, you can click that microphone icon, and it'll unmute you, or you can push the space bar, and that'll do that as well. Um, everybody so far is not coming on with video. Um, right next to that's the video feature. If you do the same thing there, if you click on the icon and you have a webcam enabled on your computer, then you're able to uh, bring your video up. The other feature that you'd need for today is about in the middle of the screen on the bottom, and that's the chat feature. It shows the little um, comment icon above it. If you click on that item, you're able to then um, type out a message that everyone can see, and those are ways you can ask, ask questions if you don't have audio capability from where you're watching today. For those of you that are, that are joining us on Facebook Live, you can type a question out in the comment boxes. Those show up on my screen below and we'll answer questions that way as well. Um, so a little brief introduction, a little bit about what we're doing um, starting next Wednesday. Uh, Mr. Deverex and I have been making some phone calls, so if we haven't talked to you yet, we will try to get in touch with you in the next few days as well. Um, we have looked at moving um, with the options that have been given to required learning starting on Wednesday next week. The way that that learning opportunity is going to look and operate is that we are using um, the technical term of asynchronous. So if you're familiar with synchronized swimming from the Olympics, um, the idea there is you're doing everything at the same time. So the, the swimmers that are in synchronized swimming, they do the same movements, they do everything supposed to be um, going simultaneously. That is not what we are going to do. We instead are doing asynchronous learning, which means that's at your time. Um, so teachers will be posting assignments and activities to do along with a due date, and students have from the time that those items are posted until the items are due to complete them. We've moved to that option for a number and a variety of reasons. Um, one of the biggest reasons for looking at that type of learning approach is we know that this situation that we're involved in means that people aren't necessarily uh, able to be engaged from eight to three. We know we have students that, and families that have students working in a variety of capacities, um, either out on the farm, doing things to get ready for planting season. Um, we have some students that are being caregivers and providers for grandparents or siblings or other children within the community. We also know that there are students that are working as well. We also know that individuals, um, internet access, while most people have internet in their homes, to put two or three or four or five people on it simultaneously trying to watch a video like we're doing this, this morning or this afternoon, um, is not usually very feasible with the bandwidth capabilities that people have. So the asynchronous approach allows for those things to happen because people can set schedules for when, when learning's going to occur, when schoolwork's going to occur. It also doesn't require that bandwidth has to be, that everybody has to be on at the same point in time. So those are some of those pieces behind that to get started. Um, but I am open to ans ask, answering some questions. I did receive some by email. So I'll start with those. And then if you'd like to add additional questions, again, um, you can add those in the chat box or you can unmute yourself um, and then we can ask those questions at that time. So I'm gonna start with the questions that I received um, and then we can move on to the ones that you have here. I'm just gonna go back to grab them so that I have them. Um, one parent wanted to know um, if, if the material that students will be receiving will be graded and included for points or if it'll be simply noted as completed. So moving to the required learning component that we are, um, we will be grading these assignments. So the items that students are doing will count towards their grades for second semester. Um, a second question along those lines would be that will grades be calculated as they have been in the past or noted as pass fail? We are researching that, that one for now. Um, there are some good reasons to look at pass-fail grades, and there are good reasons to look at keeping grades um, as we traditionally would do them. So we are looking to see what the implications of moving to pass-fail would be, but um, we have not made a final decision on that yet. We are gonna 
find out some of those pieces and then make a decision. So to start with next week, grades will count. So the work that students are doing will go towards their second semester grade just as if they were in the building. Um, a third question I had was, will transcripts note that credits attained given the materials were handed in, students remain on track for graduation? The answer to that question also is yes. The idea behind this is students are getting, since we're requiring the learning, students are getting credit for this work that they'll be doing. The other question I had was, um, will teachers be sending out additional info about their classes? And we are working on that right now. Um, I actually can show you, I'll pull up my screen, and I'll show you what we will be sending out hopefully later today, if my screen will cooperate. Um, so you should be seeing on your screen that we'll be sending out this document uh, either this afternoon or tomorrow morning. Each teacher is going to be listing on here um, their office hours. So that'll be times that they're available through Google Meets or Zoom to answer questions of students face-to-face -face or virtually face-to-face. -face. Um, and those of you, I apologize if you're watching on Facebook, you can't see this part. Um, but then they'll also have on there where their materials will be located. And then the third column we have here is that any items or materials that will be needed from school. So there are some teachers, for example, uh, Mr. Broxson is going to be asking the seventh grade students to read the book, The Giver. And so we have copies of that available here at school. When we do material pickup for students next week, those seventh grade students can pick up a copy of that book when they come in. Um, so we will get this list out to everybody um, as soon as we've got it finalized. All right, uh, D is asking, uh, will each child be expected to complete activities for all classes or will there be specified learning for a couple of subjects? In order, for, D and for everybody else, in order for us to go to required learning, the state's requirement for that is that all classes must meet. So every class that a student had previously will still be meeting in some form or fashion. What we've talked to teachers about is looking at this point in time at essential learning. Um, and that's not any special phrase, that's just what we're trying to, to label it as. And what we mean by that is knowing that we have about five weeks of material or time that we're gonna be able to get through, what are those key things that students need to be able to take away for, for progression to additional subjects for next year? We know that we're not gonna get 100% of the material we'd like to get covered covered within these five weeks and in this, this type of learning environment but we wanna be able to look at what are some of those key elements that students can take away moving forward for next year. Um, you know, math, math is probably the one where we think about that the most because in a math subject area in particular, you have those progressions that build up to the next subjects in some of those instances. So the math, math department in particular has been looking at that and trying to work through some of those concepts and ideas. Other questions people have. You can add them in the chat or like I said in the bottom, you can unmute yourself and ask your question. I'll also try to keep an eye on my email in case anything comes through there as well. Pam, if you are asking, Mrs. Gadkin, if you're asking a question, I cannot hear you. Um, you need to unmute down in the bottom. Um, we are, I can answer the prom question because I've gotten that quite a bit. Um, we are working on an alternative date for prom. Um, we should have something announced either tomorrow or Thursday for that. Um, we are still looking to have prom at this point in time as long as we can work it into the school schedule. Um, if we would have an additional delay of returning physically to school until later in May, um, that may, we'll have to then revisit that conversation or that decision, but right now we've got a date in mind for prom and a plan. We just need to finalize a couple things before we make, we let everybody know. Also for seniors parents, if we have senior parents that are on today with graduation, you'll be receiving something in the mail um, by the, should be by the end of this week outlining where we are for days. What we've done at this point is move things back to the, um, the first week of May. So we would be doing um, baccalaureate still on the first Wednesday. Senior awards would move to the first Friday of May, so that'd be May 8th. And then graduation is still slated to be on the 17th. Um, the goal there would be is even if we delay, further delay school coming back physically in session, um, 
that graduation would still happen um, in a physical format. So it means if we need to wait potentially till June to do that, um, we're looking at that right now because we feel that graduation should be something that we do with everybody together because it's a group activity. A lot of this will depend on how things come out and also uh, what will be allowed for large group gatherings when we move forward from some of the pieces that are in place right now. I'm also gonna share um, information, so I'll pop up my screen here and go to this. Um, this came out yesterday, so some of you may have seen this already, and if not, um, it might be new information to you. Um, when it comes to activities and athletics, this is what the sports schedule is looking like, uh, and this depends on uh, coming back on the 1st of May. Again, if you're on Facebook Live, my apologies, I'll try to walk through this verbally for you. Um, so the Girls Athletic Union has set that if school resumes on May 1st, which is what the current plan is, practices for spring sports, that's track and field golf, and in our case soccer because we don't have uh, tennis, first practices would be May 1st. The first competition would be on Monday, May 4th, except for soccer. The first competition for soccer will be on May 8th for the girls. Um, postseason would start at different times, so postseason lead up for track and field will be June 28th. Golf would be May 26th and June 1st, and then soccer would be starting June 4th. State tournaments or state competitions for those would be track and field be June 4th through 6th to the girls, June 8th and 9th for golf, and then for soccer, June 16th, 18th, and 20th. On the boys' side, practices would be, and first competitions stay the same, so that's May 1st for practice, May 4th for competitions other than soccer, that'll be on May 8th. Postseason would start would be May 28th for track and field. Golf would be the 29th of May and June 5th. And then soccer would be June 8th, 10th, and 12th with the state tournaments being June 4th through 6th for track and field because that's boys and girls together. Boys golf would be 11th and 12th of June. And then boys soccer would be the week of June 15th, so 15th, 17th, and 19th. So that's what we know. And that, again, is contingent upon school coming back on, in session on May 1st. Other questions that folks have. Again, you can ask a question by unmuting yourself in the bottom left corner where your microphone is. If you click there, it will activate your microphone. Or you can add something in the chat box if you're watching us on Zoom by clicking where it says chat and then a, a pop-up box will come in with a question. If you're watching on Facebook, you can add a, a comment and that'll show up on my screen if you wanna ask a question there. All right, there's a question here. A uh, question was asked about the musical, if it'll be rescheduled. We are trying to work on rescheduling the musical as well. Um, we had a plan A in place with the anticipation of being back um, on the 13th. We're now working on plan B, which is anticipation of being back on May 1st. Um, so we have that we have that planned. We're going to hold on announcing when those dates would be, um, but we, we are going to try to have that rescheduled as well. And part of the reason we're waiting on some of those pieces is um, the governor last week when she made the, the uh, decision and announcement that school was going to be closed through the month of April has said that she intends to have an, a decision made for the beginning of May if we'll be back face to face by the end of next week. So um, she's, she's announced that she's trying to have that done at least two weeks in advance of the dates that are there. Um, so depending on what that announcement would be will impact potentially some of the planning that we do for activities moving forward. Other, other questions that anybody has?
All right, not seeing seeing not seeing any additional questions. Oh, now we've got one. There we go. Okay. So a question was asked about grading assignments. Will teachers take into account that there's less contact and teaching them on their own? Will students be tested on the mat on items as well? Um, so good. That's a good question that comes in. We are working through some of those pieces as well. Um, we all know that this learning modality is new for most people. Um, obviously, obviously for our, most of our students and many of our teachers, um, there, are, there are a few folks that have either taken an online class um, as a student or that they've um, taught an online class before as well. And we also have to take into consideration the, the larger environment that's going on as well. So we've been trying to look at pieces that are um, and, and encouraging staff to look at activities that require more open-ended responses rather than you know, multiple choice, true and false, and things along those lines. We're also looking at that from a, an academic integrity piece because that's a concern from a teacher perspective of you know, you're at home, who's, you know, we can't, who's doing the work? Most of the time we would think the students are doing the work, but you don't have those guarantees that are in there necessarily. So we're, we're looking at that and taking that into account and ask them to take a look at those, those components. So we're looking at what is it that you're being asked to do, um, and also those things will be reflective as, as we look at this. Um, the best way I can describe it is everybody's in this, to, you know, you've heard a lot of people use the, the term we're all in this together, and um, Maybe that's being overused in some instances, but we're all going to learn through this together in terms of how the, these pieces work. Um, one of the advantages of having the C term the last couple of weeks is that um, a good analogy that I've thought of is, you know, we, we dipped our toes in the water and uh, now maybe we're, we're getting more of, you know, if you're going to keep the swimming analogy going, we're going to start wading in the water together and then we're eventually going to have to swim together as well. But it's going to be something that we're all doing as we go. So there are things that, you know, there are things that are gonna, there will be hiccups. Things won't necessarily work perfectly to get started, um, but continuing to have feedback back and forth will be, will be a key important piece as we go through this as well. You know, teachers will be looking to see what works and doesn't work. Um, for students to be able to tell teachers and, and families too to say, hey, this is working or this isn't. You know, there's the, there's a possibility that a teacher might have something planned that thinks that this might this might be enough work to do for the week and people breeze through it. We might find that somebody's got a plan put in place that with the circumstances and how things are going, they're going to have to step back and slow down a little bit too. So um, we'll, we'll all work through it as we go and, and continuing to give us feedback on things will be, will be important. couple other things that I can mention. Um, we are looking to still do some faith opportunities for students. Right now, the Spires of Faith cluster priests are celebrating Mass every morning at 8 o'clock, and that's streamed on um, our Beckman Catholic YouTube page, so you can watch that. We've talked about looking at Thursday Masses that are streamed at 8 o'clock, that they would be geared more for our student population rather than having a separate Mass. Um, so that's something that's that's out there that will be available that we're going to talk about working through. We're also looking to do daily announcements in some type of video format along with morning prayer, that that would be something that students would have um, to look forward to each day as well. Any other questions that I could answer today? All right, just to recap briefly, we will be, if you haven't um, completed the form for material pickup, we would ask that you do that as soon as possible. Um, when we know for sure the, the document I shared earlier in this session with what the teachers are asking for materials is completed, we will get that sent out. We will leave the, the, the uh, item, material pickup sheet open until after people have had a chance to look at that. So even though we said, to please have that material pickup sheet done by today. We will likely leave that open until sometime tomorrow. So that way people can take a look and make sure that if, if they need to re review or say that, yep, I'm gonna need that, that'll be there. We are looking to do material pickup early next week, um, probably on Monday. 
we will pull everything from student lockers this week and have it all bagged up and put the students names on them so when you come for pickup next week it'll be we'll try to have something alphabetically set up that you can come in grab you grab your materials and be able to go so you won't have to students or family members who are coming to get those items will not have to go down and retrieve them from the locker we'll have them up here for you so that that speeds up the process as well if you have questions concerns or anything else continue to feel free to reach out to us here at school you can give the office a call we usually have somebody available to answer the phone um, or you can leave a message if no one's here Otherwise, moving forward, email is going to, especially for students that are watching today, um, you're going to need to be becoming more comfortable with your email because that'll be the primary method of communication for how things come back and forth through things. So I'll give one last chance for questions, and if there are, aren't any questions, then we'll wrap it up for the day. And I just want to say on behalf of the teachers and staff and everybody here first, we hope that all of you um, are doing all right. We continue to keep you all in our prayers um, and we appreciate your patience, understanding um, and, and help as we work through all these pieces together. Uh, somebody asked me the other day, would you have thought that this was ever going to be your some of your first two years as an administrator? And my answer would be no. Um, this situation makes 10 or 11 snow days we had last year look like a walk in the park. Um, but also, you know, we're learning things as we go through this and finding that there's still ways to communicate and still be able to do education through different means. So we appreciate your understanding and patience. Um, and again, we keep everybody in, in your, we keep you all in our prayers that you stay healthy and your, your families make, make it through this successfully. So with that, thank you very much, everyone. Um, again, if you have questions, feel free to reach out to us here at school. And uh, if we don't communicate before the end of the week, we wish you a very happy Easter. Thank you.